Hi, I'm Veli from Greenwood Solutions. Solar panels can actually collect water. So in this presentation, we're going to be looking at ground mount systems. How much water can they collect based on the location of the ground mount system? How can it be redirected into storage? What kind of storage and how it can be used? As roof real estate for solar is slowly dwindling, the commercial solar designer and installer is peering down. No, not at their feet, but terra firma, Mother Earth. So unlike a roof mount system, where the rain striking the surface of the solar array is captured, eventually by the gutter system, with a ground mount system, the water simply runs off, and this is something that needs to be addressed. These ground mount systems take up a large space, and the actual surface area of the panels are being rained upon on a regular basis. What usually happens with this rain is that it drains off the edge of the panels potentially creating erosion and ending up in the groundwater. The area under the solar panels remains dry and the vegetation tends to die off. Australia is the driest continent in the world and water is the most precious commodity that we know of. Life cannot be sustained without water. So the ability to capture water and redirect it into some kind of storage is really, really important. So what we're talking about today is the ability for solar panels potentially to capture water and then redirect it into storage, whether it's trench system, whether it's an underground tank system or above ground tank system. Questions must be asked such as, how much rain falls per year in a particular area? How much rainfall can actually be captured? What calculations do we need to know? How can the water be redirected into storage? What are the storage options? And what can the water be used for? So Australia really varies in regards to the rainfall. You're talking about the lowest rainfall in Australia in a place near Lake Eyre, 100 mil on average per year. Up to Bellenden Kerr, they get 7,950 mil per year on average, nearly eight metres of rain. So where are these solar ground mount arrays? The decision concerning where to locate these ground mount arrays is based on various criteria. One of the more important ones is the amount of sunlight in the area followed by the proximity to electrical infrastructure. So here we've got a table showing the yearly average rainfall in various towns and cities across Australia. So Hobart, for instance, has 569 mil per year, Darwin 1812 per year, Canberra, fairly low, 602. Uh, Broome, 658. Brisbane, 1080. Townsville, 1072. Melbourne, 518 mils. So it really, really varies. So how much rainfall can be captured? Effectively, it is a panel surface area that acts as a roof to capture the rain that falls upon it. But how much rain can a solar panel capture? For every one mil of rain falling on one square metre of surface, potentially you can collect one litre of water. So how much available surface area of a solar panel can capture the water? Now because the solar panels are tilted, we can't use the, we can't use the length of the panel. So if we've got a panel in Porto that's 2,000 mil by 1,000 mil width, we can't say, oh, the, the available area is 2,000 by 1,000, you know, two square metres. We can't, because the panel's like that. We have to do that calculation, and that's where TRIG comes in. Let's say we have a solar array using 400 watt panels. The dimensions of each individual panel are 2,000 mil by 1,000 mil. They are being installed at a 30 degree tilt. So we know when calculating the available surface area of the panel, we have to take into consideration the adjacent here. So the panel is at a 30 degree angle, um, and the, but the rain we're assuming comes down vertically. So we can't say that this is the total surface area, which is, let's say, 2,000 mil. So the calculation is sine of 30 degrees, times the length of the panel equals 0.5, which equates to 1,000 mil. So that's the height here. 
thousand mil. And once we have this figure, then we can do a calculation and find out this figure. Once we've got this figure, then we multiply it by 1000 mil, being the width of the panel, and then we've got that surface area in our example of 1.732 meters squared per panel. And then we multiply that out in regards concerning how many panels we've got. So how many rows, how many panels, etc., etc. And then we look at the location data for how much rainfall, and that gives us our calculation of how much rain we can potentially collect. We now have most of the information needed. One, average rainfall of location in question. Two, available horizontal plane of panel in meters squared. Now we need the total area of the ground mount array. And we do this by calculating the number of rows times the number of panels per row times the area of the horizontal plane of the panel in question. Pretty simple, eh? Now I put together a bit of a table and done the calculations for you. And it's interesting to see how much rain could potentially be, be collected from city to city. I've put together three different configurations or solar panel arrays. A 102 kilowatt system, a 510 kilowatt system, and a 1.14 megawatt system. Now let's start with the biggest and go straight to Darwin. You can see in Darwin, with a 1.14 megawatt system, that you can co collect nearly 9 million litres of water a year. Compared to, say, in um, Melbourne, where the figure is shade over um, 2 million, 2.5 million litres per year. It really shows, depending on where you have your ground mount system, how much you can collect, because obviously rainfalls really vary. As can be seen from the previous table, where the system is installed plays a large role in the amount of water that can be potentially harvested. With a 1.14 megawatt system, this can range from 8,944,657 litres in Darwin to 2,557,027 litres in Melbourne per year. Now, how can the water be redirected into storage? Effectively, there are two main ways the water can be re redirected into storage. First, the use of a guttering system that connects to the solar panel framing system. Or secondly, allow the water to flow off the panels into a trench system or similar. The water can be stored in trenches running near the bottom edge of the panels. If you go down the road of a guttering system, obviously cost-benefit analysis is required. So I'm envisaging a guttering system that attaches to the framing of the actual solar panels and then redirects the water either into a trench system, an underground storage tank, or using pumps and above ground storage tank. The captured water can be used for watering of stock, irrigation of crops grown between or under the panels, see the agrivoltaics presentation, or to periodically clean the solar panels via some kind of spray system. Conclusion, Australia is a dry continent and water is a precious resource that should be managed. Ground mount systems can potentially capture and redirect rain into storage systems. To calculate the amount of water that can be captured, must use maths and specific location data. The uses of the captured water include stock watering, plant irrigation and panel cleaning. Thanks so much for watching our presentation on solar panels as water collectors. It really ties in well with this whole agrivoltaics concept. If you have any questions, any inquiries, any answers, please feel free to drop us a like and hit that subscription button. See you later.